Now, they would always say, I was one of them type of people that I am one of them type of people that if something just doesn't look right, you know, I just got to talk about it. So when I look at the fact that Brandon Rios on August the 2nd, 2014, made $985,000 to fight Diego Chavez, Diego Chavez made $25,000 that night. I thought to myself, okay, Diego Chavez at that point in time, if you don't know, look it up. He had some visa issues. He had some trouble getting over here. So what was going on is... There was a good chance that the fight would have been canceled. So I'm thinking to myself, maybe Bob Barham talked to him and his team and said, OK, well, listen, no matter whatever happens with this fight, we're going to get you another big fight afterwards. But you got to take a small purse with this. Simple as that, because we got to pay this extra money to get you over here, whatever the case may be. And Bob Arum literally went to politicians to get him over here in time. So now I'm looking at. On December the 13th, 2014, he's going to, uh, Diego Chavez is going to be taking on Timothy Bradley. And according to the Nevada State Athletic Commission and, um, and uh, Dan Rayfield of ESPN, Timothy Bradley is going to be making $2 million. $2 million for an HBO fight. $2 million. That's more than Canelo made for uh, fighting Laura on pay-per-view. And that's more than uh, Iris Landy Laura made for fighting Canelo. That's more than... That's more than um, Marcus Maidana made for fighting Floyd Mayweather the first time, unless you want to talk about that secret glove deal. So, looking at now, Diego Chavez is set to make, guess what, $35,000. You know what $35,000 is? That's a 2015 Toyota Camry without the leather. I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live with RealCombatMedia.com, and I cover boxing. I look at it like this. It's one of those situations where it's got to be talked about because I'm thinking, well, I talk about the Mayweather money, but this is just so ridiculously small. I'm thinking he fought Rios in a fight where he would look like he would maybe was going to win. And now he couldn't even he's getting a ten thousand dollar pay raise. Does he still owe Bob Barham some money? And is he getting some money on the Argentine? And how is he accepted over there at over there in Argentina? How is how are how are the fans over there looking at this fight, looking at the fact that he's fighting a guy at Fort Pacquiao? You know, maybe he's getting a huge amount of money over there. Just don't know. But right now, just got to look at that 35000 and say, what? How can you not expect the guy to be dirty and fighting for his life? You know, you fight for $35,000. You know, when he fought for that 25000 against Brandon Rios, let's say that that was just how much he was going to get, Pierre. Let's say, let's say it wasn't because, you know, he had to give some money back for getting over here in the time for the fight not to be canceled or not make no money. Let's just say... That's what he made. That's like $12 an hour if you work 40 hours a week. What kind of shit? Like, that's not the life. You can be, you, yo, listen, that's not the life. That's not the life. That's not the life. You can go be a fucking parking, parking authority person, make more than that. But instead of getting beat up and getting, you know, disqualified by Vic Draculich. Anyway, I'm T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. It's another video I gotta talk about. Amir Khan's has got these fucking golden shorts. The most expensive shorts in boxing history. I'm gonna talk about that in another video. T Street Controversy, T Street Controversy Live.